peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to go over ink stitch commands. So stick around. So Megan, what is an ink stitch command? So ink stitch commands kind of tell what your machine what to do in the process of embroidering. Um, so if you want to, let's say, stop your machine after a little bit, that's where you want to do that. Yeah, so they're like additional commands you can add to your objects mm -hmm. to tell your machine what to do at certain points during the embroidery process. So one thing we'll note right off the bat is that we use a Brother SE1900, and a lot of these commands don't work for us. Unfortunately. Yeah, but we'll show you what they do anyway in case your machine does work with these commands. Mm -hmm. So should we get to it? Let's go. We're in our Edenscape uh, 4x4 hoop template, and to get to your commands, you'll go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, commands. And from here you can see uh, an overview of the commands that you can add. Uh, the first option is adding commands to the entire embroidery project, which we'll go over here in a, in a second. Uh, next you can add layer commands, and then finally you can attach, attach commands to specific objects. And that's helpful in kind of laying out uh, how uh, the machine embroiders out that particular object. But the first thing we'll talk about is adding commands to the entire uh, project. So we'll click on add commands and you can see you have uh, two different options here. One is adding an origin for your embroidery project, which is super helpful. Unfortunately, it does not work with our machine. So I applied that, I'm gonna close. What that does is it adds a origin point. So normally our machine, um, it starts, its origin point is always in the center of our hoop uh, template, um, but if this were to work with our machine, which it doesn't, uh, we could set where our origin point, and Megan, where would that be super helpful with? If we used a multi-hoop design, or like a five by 12 hoop, when we're trying to connect the files, and we want to place them at the same point without having to make a little red dot. Absolutely, so if we got this to work with our machine, which it currently does not, but this could be our reference point for both our embroidery files for a 5x12 hoop. We could just set this in, you know, the bottom right corner and then move it around. And that could be our reference point, basically. Unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't work with the Brother SE1900, so can't use it. <laughs> uh, the next command uh, for the embroidery projects is the jump destination for sh basically stopping. So. If you add a pause or a stop to your embroidery uh, object, so your object stops, this is a point where the machine will jump to after that stop. So I'll go ahead and hit this and you'll see what it looks like. And it's this little eject button looking thing. So you can move this anywhere you want and that will kind of tell the machine where to go to, where to move the needle to after it's done sewing out that object. So this could be very helpful in applique projects. Yeah. So you don't have to remove it from the hoop, or rather you don't have to remove uh, the embroidery from the machine to cut out the applique stuff. Yeah. Um, you could just have it so that the machine moves it out of the way for you. You can cut out the applique while it's still attached to the machine. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with our machine either. What we found in doing this is it moves it up to that position, and then it will sew, which is kind of weird. It yeah. Actually, it sews like a little locking stitch in there, and I'm not really sure why it does that. So if you do, make sure to comment down below. The next thing we'll talk about is layer commands. So we often uh, do our designs in different layers so that you know they, the little embroidery projects stack on top of each other nicely. Well, in your uh, layer command, you can ignore layers. So if you have a first layer that's just an image that you're using as a trace bitmap, and rather than deleting the image or moving it off to the side, if you want to keep it there as um, kind of reference material, but mm -hmm. not but it not get in the way of your embroidery project, you can ignore that layer. So that's pretty helpful in yeah. ignoring the layer. So that's that one. What we found is most helpful for our machines is the attaching uh, commands to specific objects. Uh, to show you what we mean, we're going to go ahead and draw a little circle here. And we'll just show you 
what this would look like if we were to stitch it out with no commands at all. So we go to ink stitch, visualize, send my realistic preview. So a few things we'll point out is the starting point is right here. So this is the first stitch. And then you'll see it kind of does this fill from the bottom. And then it's going to break apart somewhere over here and go to the top and work down. And you'll see it meets in the middle. And some people have issues where it just doesn't look right. It mm -hmm. won't meet right in the middle. And we've talked about some settings and params that can mm -hmm. help with that. But there's also a way to, to make your autofill stitch the way you want. So we're going to go ahead and close this real quick. And we're going to go to extensions, ink stitch commands, and then attach commands to selected layers or objects rather. And what we're going to do is for our fill stitch, we're going to go ahead and define a starting position and ending position. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get rid of the stop for now. Hit apply. Close. Okay. So we noted earlier in our simulator realistic preview that the starting position was somewhere over here. Just for show, I'm going to move it over to here. Now, this could be helpful if you're very specific in your design and you want it to stitch at a very specific starting point, uh, maybe next to another object, and that's just where you want it, you can define where that starting position is. But what we found is the stopping position is actually helpful in defining how autofill breaks apart that fill. So if you move it all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top, you'll notice that you'll get one continuous autofill so it won't break up in the middle. So I'm gonna leave it at the bottom for now. And then I'm gonna highlight all of this and we'll go back into our simulator realistic preview and we'll see the difference. So now you'll know the starting position was right where we put it on this side. And this time the fill should start at the very top and it's going to work all the way down to the bottom because we defined this as a stopping position, not the middle. Conversely, we can move this stopping position all the way to the top. I can select it. We can move it all the way to the top and we can have the fill start from the bottom and work its way up. So now you can see it starts at the bottom and then it's going to work all the way to the top. Again, this is just kind of getting a lot of control over your fill stitch. And if you're having problems where you cannot get it to your design to meet in the middle properly and your other settings aren't working, this is just a cool way to have the autofill do the work the way you want it to do without having to mess with manual settings. Um, and then finally, if you did want to break in the middle, I don't really know why, but you could actually define where in the middle by moving that stop position wherever you want it. And I'll show you here. And see, it broke up in the middle and this time we actually told it to. So, and there's your stop position right where we put it. So kind of cool with your fill stitches. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next command, which again, we'll, we'll just talk about um, because our machine uh, doesn't necessarily work with this, but uh, it's very helpful. If you have two objects of the same color and your machine just kind of hops on over to it, leaving a big jump stitch across, you can set a trim command uh, by going to adding a trim. So right here, you can add a trim command, which will add a little scissor mark. And if your machine is capable, it will cut right there and then move to the separate object. Now our machine doesn't work with this, but what we found is if we actually hit the stop, not the trim, what will happen is our machine will actually stop and our machine does an automatic trim at that point. And then we can hit the start button and it will go on to the next object with the trim Piece, so it will be trimmed, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. Yeah. And depending on how far apart these objects are, the machine may cleanly pull the, the remainder of that trimmed uh, thread out or not. But that's helpful for us. The stop command does work for us. Yeah. 
Uh, trim cool. command does not. And I'll just pull up just so you can see here. The little scissor mark is what the trim command is. All right, so the next thing, we're gonna need a satin stitch to work right. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a kind of a custom satin stitch here. And one thing that I noticed in these satin tools is we can convert a line into a satin stitch, uh, something that we haven't done uh, on this channel yet. So uh, first I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker to the thickness that I want it. There, nice healthy satin stitch. And then I'm gonna curve it a little bit. All right. So there's a nice line that we want to turn into a satin stitch. So to do that, we're just gonna to go to extensions, ink stitch, and then satin tools, and we can convert the line to a satin. And you'll see it automatically creates the railroad tracks that we've been manually building. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, first thing we wanna do is look and see how this would stitch out. So we'll go to our realistic preview. Okay, so you'll see it starts over here on this left side and then in one continuous stream should go all the way over to the right side, right? But what if you wanted to start over here and go that way? Well, just like our fill, we can define our start stop positions. So we're gonna go to our commands And instead of fill, because this is not a fill stitch, we're going to deselect those. We're going to auto route satin start position and end position. I'll go ahead and get rid of those commands so they're out of the way. And apply. So in this one, let's say I want to start over here. So I moved it right to the very end, kind of wonky there. I don't really know why it's so much more difficult with this one than it is with the fill stitches, um, but it is more difficult getting these to go where you want them to. So mm -hmm. for instance, this play one, I'll probably not be able to get it to go. Oh wait, there it goes. Let's start it there. I've changed where the start position is and where the end position is. This requires one additional step before we go over to the realistic preview is we have to go to our satin tools and then auto route satin columns. So once I do that, it should apply those settings and you'll see these little things move. Do I hit apply? And it'll apply the start and stop positions and then it, I, clicked on trim, uh, trim jump command, so that's there. But let's go ahead and look at this in the simulator. So now you can see it started on this position and moved over into this position. Quite a bit of work to get it to go in that particular direction, and again, that Honestly, it's probably too much work for me to want to do on a regular basis, <laughs> at least with these satin comps. Yeah. Now, the fill stitches, I think, are money. Like, being able to decide where it starts and stops so you get a continuous flow on a fill stitch. This satin column stuff, I, I don't know. I think it's really not worth it for me right now. I really cannot think of a reason why I would change this. And I thought for a second, maybe it it's, has to do with the lettering stuff. Um, but those are all... Kind of set and i guess if you were creating your own font which we have in the past mm -hmm. um, you can decide where the start and stop is but it's honestly already a pain in the butt to to do the font so um, <laughs> yeah, adding work. adding this onto it i don't know maybe it's worth it maybe i just don't know how to use it just yet but that's a way to kind of flip how yeah. these satin columns maybe these results out. to you are worth doing that extra step if you have a certain particular way you want it to stitch up. Yeah. 
Now we did think, well, maybe this is also applicable to the, um, the strokes around a fill, but we tried applying these. We tried all day to try to get it to change where the stroke would start stitching out. It always starts at the 12 o'clock position and goes counterclockwise and we cannot get it to change. Uh, so if you have any tips for us on how any of these commands can be applicable to the stroke and get it to start and stop where you want it to, please let us know because we, mm -hmm. we do not know. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is the uh, cut command or cutting a satin column command. So after you've got this nice little curve, let's say you wanna break it apart so that you can, I don't know, start it here and then stop and then start on this side and then stop at a certain point. Say you wanna do that. Well, right now, again, you can only get it to go in one direction and then move over or in the other direction and move over. Uh, so if you want to break this apart, and I think this would be helpful in the lettering if you're creating your own custom letters, you could break this apart at a specific spot. So have that selected. We'll go into our commands and we're going to go ahead and select on the satin cut point and apply. Okay. You can see it has this little uh, scissors with a little cut in there. And let's say we want to put it over here on this side. By itself right now, this really does nothing. Um, you have to do another command in the satin options. So ink stitch in your satin tools rather. So you have to do another command in your satin tool options. So you go into satin tools. Now you can go to cut satin column and it's gonna cut this object in half right at this point. So now that goes away and you can see I have two separate objects now so okay. now, yeah, so now I can um, put my play button here. So it starts here and moves out. And then for whatever reason, I can move on to something else. Um, but a very convenient way to, if you've already done the work of building a satin column and you want to break it apart, um, you can do that. And then lastly is uh, we can ignore a specific object. So if we just don't want to stitch part of this column, we can click on that and apply. And we don't have to modify or design it all. It stays there. It looks the same, but you'll see that that particular object is not going to stitch. I think an easier way to probably do this is just move this to a different layer uh, and then use the command to not stitch out that particular layer. But um, maybe you want this here and that's how you want it. And now you can do that. Mm -hmm. So. That is all of the different options here uh, for ink stitch commands. Yep. So I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any ideas how we can make the most out of these commands, make sure to leave it down below. Yeah, again, we're not experts. We've just played around with the commands a little bit and to see what works with our machine. And unfortunately, our machine doesn't work with a lot of these mm -hmm. commands. Uh, what would be helpful is the origin command, again, with a five by 12 hoop, that would be really helpful in yeah. setting kind of a plot point um, that is the same for both files, but it doesn't work uh, as well as the uh, jump to command. Uh, it just causes the machine to stitch in a lock stitch uh, at that position for some reason, um, and we can't turn that off. So we'll take what we can get and, you know, being able to decide how the fill stitch lays out is pretty nice mm -hmm. and hitting the, uh, pause command or stop command um, rather than the trim command, again, is a way for us to trim jump stitches out of our projects. We just have to constantly stay by it and hit the play button yeah. uh, on the machine to get it to go to the next object. But that's what we have to do. It's still better than what I did with the gift tag on the snowflake. Yes, better than all those jump yeah. stitches. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.